This is the doubling cube in backgammon. How the heck do you use it? What does a beginner need to know? Well, actually, it is an essential element that can significantly impact the outcome of a game, introducing an extra layer of strategy by allowing players to increase the stakes and potential rewards. Let's take a few minutes to learn about how to use it well here on Legendary Tactics. I really love the doubling cube. It's such a simple mechanic, but it adds so much flavor and depth to the already interesting game of backgammon. If you don't know how to make use of it, you yield a great advantage to your opponent. This will cost you points and therefore games. The doubling cube is a special die used in backgammon to increase the stakes of the game. It is a six-sided cube with the numbers 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and 64 printed on its faces. At the start of the game, the doubling cube is placed in the middle of the board with the 64 face up, indicating that the game is at its initial stake. Initially, the doubling cube is in the middle, and either player can use it to offer a double. During the game, either player can propose to double the stakes by turning the doubling cube to the next higher number and offering it to their opponent. For example, if the cube is currently on 2, the player can offer to double the stakes to 4. The opponent then has the option to accept the double and continue the game at the higher stakes, or decline the double and concede the current game, forfeiting the current stake. After a double is accepted, the doubling cube is now in their possession. Only the player in possession of the doubling cube can then propose a double. Newer players are typically intimidated by the doubling cube and its implications. It can be tough to judge whether and how to use it, and this means that new players may just end up randomly taking it or dropping it. But an advanced player understands the reality that every one of your turns is a decision point for potentially using the doubling cube. There are three considerations that you will contend with. When should you double or hold? When should you take the cube when your opponent offers you a double? And finally, when should you drop it? Here are my top five elements to evaluate when making a doubling cube decision. Number one, assess the position. Before deciding to propose or accept a double, carefully evaluate the game state. Factors to consider include the number of checkers on the board, their distribution, and the strength of your position relative to your opponent. Ideally, you should have a favorable position with a higher probability of winning but analyze the risk versus the reward. Doubling introduces an element of uncertainty and declining a double results in that player losing the game at a certain cost in points. Assess the potential gains if your opponent accepts the double versus the potential loss if they decline and you win the game at the current stake. Number two, timing is key. Choosing the right moment to double is crucial. As a general guideline, it's advantageous to double when you have a significant advantage, such as a strong position or a favorable distribution of checkers. Additionally, if your opponent is in a disadvantageous position, it may be a good time to apply pressure by doubling. The doubling cube can also be used strategically to induce errors or pressure your opponent. I love using the doubling cube as a weapon of psychological warfare, forcing my opponent to concede a game that, even though I am winning, could have gone either way. By offering a double when the game is relatively even or when your opponent is in a vulnerable mindset, you can provoke hasty or emotional decisions. This psychological aspect can work to your advantage if you can influence your opponent's judgment. However, number three, understand the gammon potential. Gammons occur when a player bears off all their checkers before their opponent has borne off any and is worth two points. A backgammon is an even more significant victory, which occurs when the opponent still has checkers on the bar or in the enemy home board and is worth three points. Recognize when a gammon is likely and take that into account when considering doubling. If you have a high chance of winning a gammon, you may want to hold off doubling as it gives your opponent an easy way out where they refuse the double, concede the game, and and that sets them back by only a single point. Number four, analyze equity. Equity refers to the value of your position in a backgammon game. Several online backgammon platforms and software can calculate the equity for you, taking into account factors such as the pip count, position strength, and role distribution. Use these tools to estimate your chances of winning the game and make doubling decisions based on the equity advantage. According to some guides on backgammon, you want to either double or take your opponent's double when you have a greater than 25% likelihood of winning the game. Less than that, and you should drop it. The question is how to assess those odds. As said earlier, there are apps that can help you calculate this, and it's not a bad idea to use these to get a feel for that, to hone your gut instincts. 
Number five, be mindful of cube ownership. Understanding the ownership of the doubling cube is important. Whoever owns a cube has the sole right to propose a double. If your opponent owns a cube, focus on maintaining a strong position and try as best as you can to avoid giving them an opportunity to double. If you own the cube, strive to create situations that justify doubling to maximize your potential gains. Play aggressively or defensively, as required by the situation. Also, it is important to know about something called the Crawford Rule. This says that when one player reaches the point where they are one point short of winning the match, neither player can use the cube to double the stakes during the following game. This game is called the Crawford Game, and the rule is there to prevent the losing player from doubling right away, as they really don't have anything to lose by doing so, and that isn't fair to the player who is ahead. After the Crawford game, players may both use the cube freely. Remember, mastering the use of the doubling cube in backgammon requires practice and experience. By incorporating these strategies and developing a deep understanding of the game, you can effectively leverage the doubling cube to your advantage and increase your overall success in backgammon. This is Legendary Tactics.